It seems hard to believe that 30 years have gone by since that first mention of something that came to be known colloquial back in 1981 as gay cancer is still around, HIV AIDS. Today we're speaking with Mark Smolovitz of the HIV Story Project and he's going to tell us about his documentary still around. Mark, welcome. Thank you, David. Great to be here. So 30 years, it does seem impossible that that much time has gone by and seemingly so fast. Yes, I know. And, you know, I'm 42, and so, you know, by way of doing the math, I was practicing for my bar mitzvah back yeah, in 1981. Yeah. And I was the generation that was sort of coming of age, you know, into my sexuality um, as a gay man, you know, with AIDS sort of, you know, over my head, mm -hmm. defining every sense of my identity. Um, my producing partner, Jorg, and I came together in 2009, um, actually in response to some requests from local HIV AIDS nonprofits um, asking for quality web content about HIV and AIDS. And we saw that there was a much more powerful opportunity to do something that would kind of reinvigorate um, LGBT communities and the HIV right. AIDS community around AIDS and storytelling in time for this 30th right. anniversary. Well, I mean, for, for my generation, I'm almost 50, I, I remember that, that first article in 1981 vividly, and my entire late teens, you know, into my 20s was, mm -hmm. was dominated by news of HIV AIDS. So for me, seeing Still Around is, oh, wow. Uh, a, you know, an unpleasant mm -hmm. blast from the past, but are you finding there's a whole new generation of gay people, specifically gay men, who go, wow, I never knew it was like that? Well, I think uh, Still Around as a, as a film compilation does a number of things. Um, it is very much present day stories, so it is about living and thriving with HIV and I AIDS at the time of this 30th anniversary. Um, these are Bay Area stories. There's 15 of them in a feature-length compilation. There's 16 total directors. And we met these people by way of relationships with local nonprofits. So we you know, reached out to World, which focuses on HIV and women. Mm -hmm. And we met several women with HIV who became centerpiece protagonists for a few of these shorts. And filmmakers were matched with those protagonists to come up with a storytelling approach. So when you watch Still Around, you don't see kind of conventional documentaries. Some have that kind of conventional feel, but several of them are quite experimental. There's a spoken word piece, there's a dance film, there's a reenactment film that is mm -hmm. about um, Dwayne Kramer and his mother and the first time they spoke openly about him being HIV positive. Right, very well-known photographer in the LGBT community and beyond. Exactly, exactly. So I think the process of making Still Around was entirely hopeful and so the end result is entirely hopeful and we just had our first major screening in San Francisco at the Castro Theater during Frameline and as a producer and one of the directors of Still Around, I was completely blown away. It was a career highlight, and it was a real sense that at the 30th anniversary that people of all ages still want to engage with this crisis. And did you find that the people that had their stories told mm -hmm. and Still Around were surprised to s still be around after 30 years? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that a number of the folks, a number of the stories are, you know, about gay men who were, you know, you know, infected early on and managed to still be around thanks to you know more recent developments and treatments um, and then there's several stories about younger people and I mean really we have all walks of life in the 15 shorts it's a beautifully diverse panorama of stories and one of the big takeaways was that many people saw themselves on screen the other piece that I think is quite important to point out is that these are not all folks who are HIV positive. Several of the shorts are either caregivers or people who live around it or are impacted by it. Um, the, the compilation ends decidedly with a story about someone who is HIV negative who is looking to the future and looking for a cure. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned before we, we started doing the interview that the, one of the impetuses for mm -hmm. starting the HIV Story Project was the work you had done or the experience you had vis-a-vis -vis Shanti. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that institution, which for a long time seemed to be the foremost HIV AIDS nonprofit in the Bay Area. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, in 2009, you know, we were, you know, in the, the heat of a terrible economic downturn. And I'm always someone who's been very involved in the nonprofit sector, very involved in philanthropy. And I was mindful as that was unfolding that nonprofits, especially ones that work on HIV and AIDS, would have to kind of cut back on marketing, cut back on messaging, and you know those are the toughest line items to keep going in a and recession. And they're the first ones that any nonprofit cuts during bad times. Right. They well they they cut them, but they need them the most. Most. Right. So that's sort of an, a strange kind of situation that many nonprofits were finding themselves in. And so when Shanti approached us. 
I saw a real opportunity to ha kind of insert a new nonprofit, the HIV Story Project, into the equation that would focus on HIV and media and storytelling mm -hmm. and provide services, training, and support to those organizations. So if they can't shore up their budget line items to do it in-house, mm -hmm. they could look to the expertise of myself, my producing partner, Jorg, and our very robust, talented network of filmmakers here in the Bay Area to actually make content for them. So, so, so in kind of a way, you've helped AIDS-related nonprofits outsource their PR and marketing needs. Exactly, and so in some instances, we, we've been while we've been producing the film compilation, we're also doing other special projects like public service announcements, fundraising videos, event videos. Um, we are a work for hire nonprofit, and mm -hmm. we keep our price points low so nonprofits can afford us, and so we can really engage with them and understand their needs. A lot of the way that I do things with any nonprofit is I kind of go in and do an, an, analysis. Media, an analysis, a media needs assessment. And there are a lot of needs out there, and media production is a skill set that, you know, it's funny, oftentimes groups like Stop AIDS Project or Shanti, they'll actually own gear, but they'll have no resources to train the staff. And they don't so, know how to use it yeah. themselves. So we've done things like workshops for training for staff and board, and we did a special collaboration with a class on AIDS at Stanford University. And, and all along the way over the last couple of years, these sort of touch points in the community have helped us um, create capacity that has helped us fund still mm -hmm. around. Um, still around, I always like to share this with everyone, and Still Around was funded largely through a Kickstarter campaign, a very successful one. A lot of folks out there have heard about Kickstarter, they've gone online and looked at it. It's a crowdfunding um, platform to fund projects, and, and we did it, and we did it very, very well. We actually went 170% above our goal of what we, what we set out to raise. It, that campaign then opened doors to more substantial funders, mm -hmm. and the major funder of the compilation is actually AIDS Healthcare Foundation, AHF, which initially started by Magic Johnson's foundation. Right. What does that say to you when, when something like that goes 170% above what you thought it would do, that people still want to hear stories? Uh, exactly. I think that you know, over the course of 30 years, you, know, you have several iterative generations that have been impacted by this disease. You know, some more closely than others, but there's scarcely a family in North America that hasn't mm -hmm. had some exposure to this crisis. And you know, whether it's direct or indirect, um, you know, there's a sense that this is something that has really affected many people, and it is still around, and yeah. so the, hence the title still around. Do you think, so it's not just still, still around these people who may have been dealing with AIDS, HIV for 10, 20, 30 years, but the crisis itself. is still around, exactly. Is that kind of a hard sell nowadays? I mean, it, maybe you think this is wrong, but I remember certainly in San Francisco in the Bay Area, late 80s, early 1990s, uh, it was AIDS, HIV. Yeah and, yeah, and that was on everyone's lips. And then people got kind of tired of it in the 90s, and it was breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And there was a period of autism. It was like the disease of the month, to be a little bit flip about it. Yeah, Do you no, think I now, like, AIDS, HIV is kind of like fourth or fifth down on those disease of the month? I think that that's a very real concern. You know, I think that HIV and AIDS has a very large infrastructure, pharmaceutical, healthcare, you know, federal legislati le legislative and otherwise. Um, so it's not going anywhere anytime soon in terms of how our lives are sort of, you know, dealing with it. Um, we've learned a lot about other illnesses um, by way of HIV and AIDS mm -hmm. and how to, you know, fight for certain things that we need in order to take care yeah, of the our Yeah, the breast our cancer movement would not be where it was if it weren't We're not for, for the lessons learned in AIDS, HIV. Exactly. So I think this idea of AIDS fatigue is something that we certainly live with, you know, here in San Francisco and beyond. Um, and one of the drivers of Still Around in the HIV Story Project is to kind of combat AIDS fatigue in a way that is thoughtful using media and storytelling um, and reminding people that good storytelling about illness, life, death, and otherwise surviving and thriving through illness, you know, is actually quite inspiring. You know? And compelling. Yeah, and I think the takeaway when you watch the compilation is that it is a hopeful situation. And and many more people are living and thriving with HIV and AIDS than ever before. But you know, then we also have this huge global problem. So one of the things I try to emphasize is that San Francisco has always been a bellwether of expertise around healthcare. Mm -hmm. People look to our city for best practices. Yeah, this is where Kaiser started. Yeah, innovation, inspiration comes from here. So hopefully, still around coming from here is something that could then be replicated in other communities. You know, nonprofits and filmmakers coming together to tell local stories that can then be shared with others that where people learn and get inspired. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Besides the work you do with the HIV Story Project mm -hmm. and Still Around, what kind of films do you want to make and produce? Or is it all about that right now? 
it's kind I of. I mean, you've had a it, rich history in yeah. the visual arts and the film arts here in the Bay Area. Yeah. Well, concurrently, I have another feature doc that I'm directing and producing that is also going out in the world this year called The Power of Two, which is also about a healthcare theme, which is about organ donation and transplant. Mm -hmm. That film is about the life story of twin sisters, Anna and Issa Stenzel, who are both double lung transplant recipients. So I have been over two years working on two healthcare movies and building infrastructure around those two communities. Mm -hmm. and. You know, it's a pretty powerful thing to engage with these partners who are committed to these causes. And I guess for me, my special sauce is not just the social issue documentaries, mm -hmm. but then building the community and capacity around them. Yeah, I mean, it would be easy to, I mean, my godfather was a doctor, and I remember something he said to me when I was very young. You can't get too emotionally involved in your patients. It'll drive you nuts. Mm -hmm. Do you ever have that issue? I mean, you're dealing with very serious issues. Do you ever feel like, boy, I just... Sometimes I need a break like anyone else, uh -huh. you know, but I, I really believe in powerful personal storytelling mm -hmm. as sort of a community conversation starter. Um, I know, and I'm, I mean, I'm in love with my work, so I'm, you know, happy to promote it, and sh you know, shamelessly, but I think that when people watch The Power of Two and they sit down and they experience Anna and Issa's story, and their, in their instance, it's about their journey of having gone from patients to advocates. Mm -hmm. So they receive the gift of transplant. And instead of going back into their private lives, they decided to go public, write a memoir, and mm -hmm. become advocates for organ donation around the world. So that's a pretty inspiring thing, and yeah. it may or may not mean that others in their, you know, around them will do the same, but it might make them think about, about illness Doing differently. We've been speaking with Mark Smolovitz and his inspiring work on film. I'm David Perry, and you've been watching 10%. Hope you tune in next week. Thanks so much.